We're going to go to Romans chapter 8. We will pray as well. And considering we could do a verse by verse study through the book of Romans, it takes a lot of study to do such a thing, so mm -hmm. you can't just skip over the stuff you don't want to teach. Right. But Romans chapter 8, uh, we'll go to verse 5. And this whole chapter is one of my favorite chapters. It has about lots and lots of truth in it. We'll look at verses 5 through 9. And this will probably answer some of the reason why we see so many people come and go. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. Amen. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, either indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Amen. Well here, Paul is dealing with the carnal mind versus the spiritual mind, or the things which are of the flesh versus the things which are of the spirit. And I'd say the reason the vast majority of people come and go in the Lord's churches, and I've seen, couldn't count how many people I've seen come and go when right. I hear there at Sunnyview, is because they are minded to the things of the flesh, as this text here says. They are carnally minded rather than spiritually minded. Right. Mm -hmm. He says, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, this goes along with what Martin Luther called the bondage of the will, that mm -hmm. the natural man is going to follow after the things which its will is bound to. <coughs> As a person who has never been born again, they're not going to follow after spiritual things because You're they're right. not spiritual. Me and Brother Adam were talking a couple weeks ago about just the craziness that goes on in this world and mm -hmm. how they, they really can't help it, can they? Because that's the way their will is bent. That's the way their nature is bent, is towards wickedness. Mm -hmm. A man can try to clean up his life, try to be a, quote, good person, but Ultimately, if you're in the flesh, you're going to follow the things of the flesh. Right. What he is, Paul is saying here is that they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's what occupies their minds, what occupies their life. That's what occupies their passions and desires is the things of the flesh. Amen. The natural man does not long for the things of God. And I say that's why there's so many, quote, churches today that have all these other entertainments and activity right. and programs. Yeah. They have to entertain the flesh. Mm -hmm. well, Spurgeon talked about that a lot in his lifetime. Even exactly. Said, you know, one time he said, there will come a day when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, there will be clowns entertaining the goats. There you go. I'd say that describes me, so-called churches today. He also said something like, if you have to put on a carnival to get them to come to church, you'll have to keep putting on the carnival to keep them in church. There you go. To the, those that are never been saved, never been born again, they are going to desire fleshly and worldly things. But, you know, the so second part of that verse says, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. If you've ever truly been born again, you will desire spiritual things. But we could sum up really this whole text here and what Christ said in John 3, 7, you must be born again. Amen. There must be a, a radical change, if you will, in someone's life where they will never follow after the things of God. But if one has truly been born again, they will follow after spiritual things. Mm -hmm. I'm not 
saying we can never get backslidden or never get wrapped up in things of this world, but someone who's truly been born again, they're going to desire to follow God and follow, as it calls here, the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, why, if someone professes to be saved and there seems to be no change in their life, I wonder if they really have what they say they have. There you go. Verse 6 goes on to say, For to be carnally minded, as fleshly minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And here's where we can get messed up in our walk with God. If we're thinking carnally minded, that's going to, it ultimately leads to death. But even death here is a separation from <coughs> God. Except to be carnally minded is going to separate us from God and the things of the Spirit. But to be spiritually minded, he said, that's life and peace. And Isaiah said that he, can't quote it exactly, but if our mind is stayed on him, he will give us peace. Amen. That's why the world doesn't have peace today, is because their mind is not fixed upon God. It's fixed upon everything else. Mm -hmm. That's why many professing Christians don't, because we are focused on the world and politics and the economy and everything else. But we would seek after spiritual things, it will bring, it says, it says here, life and peace. That in, in the flesh, it's easy to look out and see the, the state of the world and the economy and all that and be discouraged, but yet there's great peace in just simply trusting in God. Amen. Focusing on the things of God, knowing we already know how it's going to end anyway. Whether America falls as a nation or whether it continues on, that's in the hand of God. We know Amen. that. Whether the economy collapses or it continues on in a good state, that's also in the hand of God. And he has said He can provide for our needs according to His riches. He, you know, whether it's Biden or Trump or whether we have a Baptist pastor in the White House, God right. is still ultimately in control. So to be spiritually minded, he says, is life and peace. But we are too easily caught up in the carnally minded things. But as we mentioned in the previous verse, those that are never been born again, they're always going to be carnally minded. They're always going to be thinking according to the flesh, according to their nature. But we which have been born again, we should always be thinking according to that new nature was been imparted to us. Amen. Verse 7, he goes on to say, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. This is why it leads to death, is because it's carnal mind is against God. It's, it's really the enemy of God. It's the embodiment of being the enemy of God. He says, Amen. So the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, that natural nature of man is against God and the things of God. It always will be. Like I said, man can try to clean up his life. He can try to be a good person, but if he's carnally minded, he's going to be against God. Right. We don't need to invent new programs or messages or entertainments. When we do that, we're trying to, or people do that, they're trying to attract the carnal mind. Mm -hmm. well, it's always been just simply preaching Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Say so. Amen. Going on in verse 7, it says, For it is not subject, that is the carnal mind, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. This saying it's not subject to the law of God doesn't mean it's not <laughs> under the law. And the, but it's not submitted to the law of God. The carnal mind doesn't willingly submit to the law of God, does it? Right. This is the same as you described the relationship between the husband and the wife. That the wife is to subject herself to her husband. But as a rebellious wife is not submitted to her husband, it says neither is the carnal mind submitted to the law of God. Mm-hmm. 
It's still responsible to the law of God. It still will be held accountable before God according to his law. It will still be right. condemned by the law, but it does not willingly or voluntarily submit to the law of God and follow after it. Amen. He goes on to say, you either indeed can be, but they can't submit to it, <clears throat> follow after the law of God. Because it is completely against it, it's completely opposed to the things of God. Mm -hmm. That is why you must be born again. Amen. So that's why I have a problem with the ABCs, and they'll take this correct me, or Amen. just be baptized. None of those things cause this change, which we call being born again. Amen. In fact, Christ said, can't even see the kingdom of God unless you've been born again, much less understand the things of God. Mm -hmm. John 3, 3, when he stick, talking to Nicodemus, he said, a man must be born again to see the kingdom of God. And of course, Nicodemus thought he was talking about being literally born again of a woman. And Christ goes on in verse 6 to say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. And that is really the reason why the flesh cannot comprehend the things of God, because flesh is flesh, obviously, and the things of God are spiritual. Amen. And the two cannot mix together, like, you know, like oil and water, they will always separate. Mm -hmm. not compatible one with another. In fact, they're said it before opposed one to another. The flesh, the natural mind, the, the natural nature of man, it's bent completely against God and his law and the things of the spirit. First Corinthians 2 tells us that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. And this is why, because they are not spiritual. But you can't go out to the graveyard and have a talk about anything with a dead man, can you? Right. Neither can you just have this normal spiritual conversation with a, a lost person if they are dead spiritually. Let's go over there, 2 Corinthians for this one. Read that verse, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. No, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, either can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Amen. So the natural man is not going to receive spiritual things. He's not going to be receptive to the gospel. He's not going to embrace the things of God. Right. <coughs> he says here that they are foolishness unto them. Mm-hmm. If you just survey the world, they would, they might not admit it, but just by the way they act and the way they conduct themselves and the things they do and say, they very clearly display that the things of God are foolishness to them. So everyone, the world, or at least the liberals, are up in a uproar about Roe versus Wade now. Right. It's not because they don't care, I mean, they really, they don't care about unborn children, but ultimately it's because they cannot understand the things of God. They cannot Amen. understand what they are doing is wickedness and sin. They think, well, it's just my body, my choice that they're saying. But we're not going to get off on that, but all the displays of wickedness you see in the world, not because... Oh, well, they know it's bad. They just want to do it. No, it's, they think the things of God are foolishness. Right. Their nature is meant to do those things. 
He says, neither can he know them. Well, a natural man can't even know the things of God. It says he can know about them. He can have an intellectual knowledge of the things of God. But yet he cannot truly be convicted and follow them. Amen. I'll use a little bit of a crude example here, if Brother Larry doesn't mind. Brother Larry's a nurse, and I have engineering. So Brother Larry probably doesn't even know what Pythagorean's theorem is. <laughs> I say most of you probably don't if you don't need it. It's just A squared plus B squared plus C squared is all it is. <laughs> Which means how you can figure out the size of a right triangle. You use that sometimes in carpentry and engineering and architecture and those types of fields, but you never need that in nursing. Right. Just like I probably couldn't even give someone medicine like a <laughs> hurricane. I certainly couldn't start an IV. <laughs> but it's the same way it is with the natural man versus spiritual man. The natural man cannot receive the spiritual things because he doesn't understand them. He doesn't. Right. They're really a mystery to him, if you will. Yeah. Just as Brother Larry doesn't understand engineering terms and I don't understand nursing terms. Right. Natural man will not understand spiritual things. Right. Amen. They're spiritually discerned. He says, let's go back to our text in Romans. Verse number eight, Paul comes to this conclusion. He says, so then that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Mm -hmm. And here is the reason one must be born again, because otherwise they will never be able to please God. If they are always carnally minded, they will never be able to please God. If they have never been born again, they will never be able to please God. But it's by faith that we can please God, Hebrews 11 tells us. The natural man doesn't possess faith. Right. Because that is another spiritual thing. The natural man cannot receive faith when he must be born again. Amen. We have this reassurance in verse number nine. He says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. <coughs> we, we, are, we dwell in this flesh, but we're not in the flesh. We're not after the flesh that we've been born again. Amen. Yes, we have <coughs> to dwell with this flesh and this life, but it is not what controls us. It's not what controls our desires. And we've been depart, imparted this new nature. He says, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And that is different between the saved person and the lost person today. Does, does the Spirit of God dwell in you? Mm -hmm. Not have you been baptized or not are you a good person or not are you a member of a sound church? You know, all those things are good, but does the Spirit of God dwell in you? That's what Amen. makes the difference. Have you been born again? That which is born of the Spirit is spirit, he says. Well, he must be born again of the Spirit of God. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Doesn't get any more plain than that, does it? That Amen. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ or the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, we would call him. Then we are none of his. We don't belong to Christ. We don't have that Spirit dwelling within us. Let's go back to John 3 and we'll close. We all know this particular passage of scripture. We'll read it for our refreshment here. John 3. Let's go ahead and read verses 1 through 7. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, 
I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So there is the first command to be born again, which you bad, without which a man will not see the kingdom of God, even less he will understand the kingdom of God. First order, we see Nicodemus still carnally minded, thinking fleshly, he says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time his mother's womb and be born? You know, this is a perfect picture of how the carnal mind views the things of God. Amen. It's always thinking from a, a fleshly and physical aspect. But that's why they try to explain away the miracles of God and creation and why they can't understand what it means to be saved or born again. Why they don't understand why we come here with just a small group of people and meet every Sunday and we're right. Because to them, it's foolishness. It doesn't make any sense to the world, to the natural mind. So I've heard all sorts of theories about what, how the Red Sea was parted, but you know, God says in His Word that He sent a strong east wind and it was divided and they walked across on dry ground. Amen. It's not always something you can explain physically. Man tries to explain the creation of the universe by the Big Bang or all these other theories. And of course, they're constantly evolving because they their understanding is very finite. Right. But yet, God in His Word, He said He spoke and it came into existence. Amen. But man cannot understand that. He can, doesn't want to understand that. He's not going to understand that and until he's been born again. He will not accept such a fact as that. And then going on, verse 5, it says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Of course, your candlelight types would say this is speaking of baptism. But <laughs> I think Christ makes it clear in the next verse that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. And the water refers to the natural birth and the spirit to the new birth. No, it's not. No, he says that he has to be born of the Spirit. It has to be the Holy Spirit, not just any spirit. Not just you turning over a new leaf or cleaning up your life. But the Holy Spirit must come in and make you a new creature. In fact, Paul tells the Corinthians that we are a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away, but all things have become new. Amen. That is that what we would call a radical change in one's life. It's not just being a better person or repeating a prayer. It's a complete change of nature and character. And Amen. That is what one must experience to truly be saved and to truly understand the things of God. And Christ says in verse 7 again, Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And you must be born again before you will ever accept anything of the things of God. Amen. Now, I don't know how it all works out in time, but I say even a person must be born again before they can even truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because a natural man cannot please God, a natural man cannot possess faith, a natural man cannot do anything spiritual so that is completely contrary to his nature and mm -hmm. he is at enmity with such things but when the Holy Spirit comes out and makes you new you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ amen but do you have that experience well, I, Christ didn't say you must be a good person or you must join this church, you must be baptized and say you must do a lot of good works and then hope when you get to heaven Peter will let you in. <laughs> I still don't know where that idea comes from. Right. Peter's not saying it's probably gates of the checklist, I can guarantee you that. Amen. No, 
if she must be born again. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved as a command. If you, if you do that, I guarantee you've been born again. Mm -hmm. We're going to close with that. Thought. I'm glad.